we're going to look at the process of removal of an intron and splicing of two exons together. So what we have here, this is a consensus intron from a typical eukaryote. Uh, you've got, here's one exon, here's the other exon, the intron in between. The intron's length can vary tremendously, and the sequence within the intron is highly variable. But there's some consensus sequence at the two ends of the intron. So at this end, the five prime splice junction, we have this characteristic sequence. Uh, there's some variability in this, but almost always the first two nucleotides at the five prime end of the intron would be GU. This is known as the five prime splice junction or the donor site. Over here at the three prime end of the intron, the last two nucleotides are almost invariably AG. This is the three prime splice junction or the acceptor site. That AG is typically preceded by a string of pyrimidines represented here with Ys. And then somewhere over here there's a consensus sequence some variability, but always there will be an A in there, and this A is going to be the branch point. So this is the, this is the consensus intron. The next thing we're going to look at then is the assembly of the spliceosome, which is the complex that removes the intron. Here we have the, the consensus intron again. The first thing to bind to begin the process of splicing are the U2AFs. U2AFs are proteins. U2AF stands for U2 accessory factors. We'll talk about U2 in a second. Two of these bind. One of them binds right at the acceptor site. The next one binds to the polypyrimidine tract next to that. They're extending out toward the branch point, toward this A. At the other end, at the donor site, what binds is the U1 SNRP. The SNRP is a small nuclear ribonucleoprotein, as it sounds. That's a combination of a protein molecule and a small RNA. The U1 SNRP binds at the donor site. The next thing that happens is, is that the U2 SNRP binds. The U2 SNRP requires the U2 accessory factors, U2 ADFs, in order to bind. Binds next to those so it'll be in contact with the branch point here. And then the U2 and U1 SNRPs bind to each other. In the process, that folds the intron over into a loop. And this loop can be very long. It can be thousands of nucleotides. By folding it over like this, it brings the first exon into close proximity with the second exon that's going to be joined to. The next thing that happens after the A complex is formed, three more SNRPs join, U4, 5, and 6. This complex of five SNRPs is known as the B complex. This is also what's typically referred to as the spliceosome. In this complex now, it goes through some rearrangements, and ultimately the U1 SNRP and the U4 SNRP are going to leave, leaving behind the active uh, functional complex known as the C complex. After the U1 and the U4 SNRPs leave, what's left behind is the C complex. This is the complex with the catalytic activity for splicing. And what it does is it catalyzes transesterifications. A transesterification is a reaction in which one phosphodiester bond is cleaved by hydrolysis and then another one is formed by condensation. The energy from the hydrolysis that's released compensates for the energy required in the condensation reaction so that a transesterification reaction is energetically close to a wash. It has a delta G of approximately zero. The first transesterification that will be catalyzed here is C complex will cleave the bond between the exon and the five prime end of the intron at the donor site, and then it'll join the five prime end of that intron to the RNA over here at the branch point by means of a five prime to two prime phosphodiester bond. This unusual bond will result in a branched chain RNA molecule at that point. So here we have what's formed after the first transesterification reaction. The donor site bond has been cleaved, so the exon here is sitting out, just held on by the C complex. The five prime end of the intron is now attached by a five prime to two prime phosphodiester bond to the branch point. This structure of the intron now, the intron goes from a three prime end here, around this loop, to the five prime end, which is then attached in the middle at the branch point. This loop-shaped structure is known as the lariat. 
because it looks like a lariat or lasso. And it contains then one, a very unusual structure in that this 502 prime bond means that the RNA is branched at this point. There's a single ribose sugar at this point that is attached by its 3 prime carbon to this part of the intron, by its 5 prime carbon to the rest of the intron here, and by its 2 prime car carbon again to the 5 prime end. The second transesterification is catalyzed by the C complex. In the second transesterification reaction, the C complex cleaves the bond at the 3 prime end of the intron, the acceptor site, cleaving the bond, the phosphodiester bond between that 3 prime end and the end of the second exon and then it forms a phosphodiester bond between the two exons. They are, they are now spliced together. The intron is released then in its lariat form. The C complex will then cleave the bond, the 5 prime to 2 prime bond the, at the branch point, giving you an intron that's just a linear piece of RNA, which can be degraded by RNases to loose ribonucleotides.